The episode begins with Toya and his bird being informed by their messenger that news has reached them from the scouts. They have discovered abandoned ruins in the southern region of the Kingdom of Knights, Lestia. This kingdom belongs to the country of Hilda alone, and it would be faster for them to use flying instead of Bablon at this time. Toya's friends arrive, and when he looks at them, he sees them wearing school uniforms. He asks them what's going on, and his friend tells him that they know he loves these things, so they decided to wear them to avoid standing out as older. Toya feels annoyed by them but also admires their outfits. After that, Toya appears, transferring Anya to the Bablon Tower, where he is warmly welcomed by a girl named Laura, who is in charge of the peripheral device that oversees the Briolura wall. Toya doesn't understand what she means by this wall since it's supposed to be a tower. She tells him that 347 years ago, her wall merged with the tower and completed its construction, making it what it is now. Toya listens to her in astonishment, and she tells him that she understands that he possesses all the qualifications, but both the tower and the wall can only be used by someone considered compatible. Toya informs her that he has already been recognized by the garden directors, workshop, alchemist wing, and Amber, so there is no problem for him. Laura decides to acknowledge him as compatible, and Toya contemplates the usual procedure, feeling that something is missing without it, but he is glad he doesn't have to go through those additional steps. The natural way is the best. Then Laura tells Toya that from now on, her codename will be Briolura, and she will always be at his service. She looks forward to serving him and now leads him to meet the tower director. When they arrive, they find a girl named Noel hidden under a large hat. Toya gets nervous when he sees her illuminating device, but Laura reassures him that she is always like that. Laura approaches Noel to wake her up, but she doesn't respond. Laura asks Toya to give her some food if he has any, as she wants to borrow it from him. Toya uses his power to reach his storage and brings back some food. When Noel smells it, she wakes up because she has not eaten a proper meal in 4,907 years. Toya is shocked by her words, but Noel starts eating the food because it looks appetizing and delicious. After finishing her meal, Noel asks Toya about himself, and he tells her that his name is Mitsuzuki Toya and that he has already been recognized as compatible by the wall. He hopes that she will also acknowledge him for the tower. She tells him that there are conditions that determine whether someone is compatible with the tower or not, but for now, all she wants is enough food to fill her stomach and a warm place to sleep. As long as she gets those, she has no complaints. Toya agrees to her terms, and when she sees him accepting, she realizes that he has fulfilled the conditions. So she acknowledges him, and from now on, her codename will be Pamela Noel, and she will be at his service. Then she asks him for food once again, and Toya brings her a lot of it. You mentioned a tower serving as the facility for the heart of Babylon. It contains a massive reactor that attracts magical particles from the air inside and amplifies them, converting them into magical energy. The sleeping girl then speaks, saying that the most amazing thing about the tower is that it only requires occasional maintenance, making it easy to manage, and she can sleep without any problems. They enter the tower, and the girl explains that this is her personal barrier and the central pillar of Babylon's defense systems. It can deploy a defensive shield against physical and magical attacks. Then Toya says that it seems the tower will be able to accelerate mass production of gear trusses and improve the ethereal fluid. He is confident that they can rely on strong defenses from the barrier shield. They leave, and the girl introduces Toya to his wives. Toya asks about the others, and a girl answers that Sway has returned to Belfast for now. Then an urgent message arrives for Toya from the Great Lady in Belfast. He takes it from the cat and says there is a problem, she is giving birth. They go to the palace, and the king, accompanied by the baby, joyfully announces that he is a healthy and well heir to the kingdom. Toya and the girl are delighted. The king asks Toya to name him, and Toya is surprised. He thinks of a name for the child and finally comes up with the name Miyato or Yamato. The girls gather together, and one of the girls says that her uncle was excited, but the people of Belfast are very happy about the announcement of the prince's birth. They will hold a celebration in Brunhild, his little brother, and the future king, who has just been born. In the end, the whole city is ready for the celebration. Toya hears that there were plans for fireworks, but he tells them it's not true, he only has seven at the moment and doesn't want anyone else after that. 
She asks if he discussed it with anyone other than the girl Lin, but she tells him she didn't. However, she made a strange request to Toya, wanting to marry him like the other girls. Toya is very surprised by her words because he doesn't want that. On the other hand, the pink-haired girl imagines herself as Toya's last wife and that if she marries him, she can eat everything since she loves food so much. At this point, Toya is very tense because this outcome is not possible at all. All the girls arrive and stare at Toya. Toya is shocked and sweating heavily when he sees them all. His face turns pale, and his gaze is tense. The girl informs him that in Professor Ray's dream, Toya is married to eleven girls, which is the reason for Babylon's division into eleven parts. All the girls are amazed. Toya is shocked by the girl's words, but one of them tells him that this is not the appropriate place to discuss the matter. They need to return to the castle. In the evening, Toya and the girls go to the castle, specifically to the library. The girls start discussing the matter, and Toya waits for the final answer. After a little thought, they tell him that he will marry nine girls, and he shouldn't cause problems between them. Toya is surprised because he doesn't want all these girls. They are the reason for his daily annoyance and troubles, but he doesn't want to upset anyone. He has a pure and kind heart, loving the young before the old, helping the poor and needy, and doing good wherever he goes. Afterward, Toya complies with the girl's request, but they place a strange condition on him, they want him to accept all of them, so they can forgive him. Toya is extremely shocked by this statement. The girls decide to impose a punishment on Toya, which involves him kissing each one of them. In order to find a way out of this situation, Toya suggests celebrating first and then fulfilling his commitment afterwards. The girls agree to this arrangement, and in the evening, Toya and the girls attend the celebration of the birth of Prince Yamato. The fireworks are magnificent, and everyone is incredibly happy. They eat, drink, and enjoy themselves to the fullest in celebration of this wonderful event. One of the girls notices that Toya seems very happy and tells him that when she saw how the king reacted after the birth of Prince Yamato, she was shocked to see how quickly parents become overjoyed when their children are born. She now understands the joy that comes with the increasing number of family members. She mentions that even though she doesn't have any children, she has all of them and this country. So, no matter what happens, she wants to ensure the safety of all the dear people to her and wants to live together with all of them forever. And with that, this part of the anime series featuring the protagonist Toya concludes. Stay tuned for the next part, which promises exciting and amazing adventures for Toya and the girls in the far west, where there are great monsters and red dragons. Also, with the birth of Toya's children, will they assist him in his thrilling adventures and extraordinary events, or will reality have a different opinion?